listen to that message, please try and listen. So because of that, we skip First Corinthians chapter six, but today we will be looking, or uh, I will be teaching on First Corinthians chapter six, you know. Uh, so I will read from verse one, First Corinthians chapter six from verse one. ESV version, ESV version, I'm reading. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saint? Or do you not know that the saint will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivia cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this to this life? So, if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? That brothers goes to law against brother, and that before the unbelievers, to have lawsuit at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded, but you yourself wrong and defraud even your own brothers? Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor Rev, um, revilers nor swindler we inherit the kingdom of God and such were some of you that you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you, Father, for your word. Guide us through this word, this entire message open our hearts to receive your word. We come against every spirit of distraction. We come against distraction in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. Brethren, uh, he's talking about uh, brethren uh, having issue in the church instead of then to resolve these issues and they take it to the take it to court, take it to the police station and stuff like that. So the church in Corinth, they had a lot of issues. So one of the issues they were having was lawsuit against believers. When something happened, instead of them to go to the leadership of the church and settle this matter, they refused to do that. They take it to, to the court. Let, let the court judge this matter. So Paul was saying that this is not right. As believers, if there is, we have issues with one another, we should resolve it according to the Bible, according to the word of God, or let the leadership of the church settle this matter. Let the leadership of the church, you know, settle this issue instead of going to the court. So when one of you has grievance against one another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saint? So going to the court, people who are not members of, of the body of Christ, Paul is saying that that is not a good idea for Christians to do. That is not a good idea, you know? So that the church should intervene in this situation. But the church cannot intervene if you don't, if you don't come to the leadership of the church and let them know what you are going through. The church, there is nothing they can really do. You know, there is nothing the church can do about that. But when you come over and hey, let the church know this is what is going on, you know, so then the church can intervene. For example, divorce, the most, the most common uh, court case is, is the divorce. Even in the body of Christ, a lot of marriages have been crippled. A lot of marriages have been even, I mean, it's, it's very, very high divorce rate. Go to the court and split the marriage and stuff like that. So this 
is why uh, some churches they have a uh, marriage committee they have people in place that can talk to this you know that can resolve this issue so it is it, 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 it all boils down to brokenness if people are not or uh, are not 100 percent committed to the word of god they are not committed or uh, to the things of god we are not yielded to the holy spirit even when the, at first even the issue is not even supposed to come there shouldn't be quarrel there shouldn't be fight to that point of saying hey i want to divorce many people are getting into marriage and they are getting married they don't even know why they want to marry i'm telling you so if the purpose of a thing is not known abuse is inevitable if a purpose of a thing is not known abuse is inevitable so when people are getting into something and they don't know why they are getting into it so even when they are there they don't know the reason why they, they don't know the purpose behind what they are doing so every little thing or oh, i will do it in the way of the world we got divorce i go to the court go to call the police for you do this do that but if you have the fear of god in your heart the first thing you will do first of all you try to resolve your differences according to the word of god you need to husband and wife need to come together i'm just using marriage as an example because that is very common so you can resolve it even before going to the pastor before going to the church to let the church know true believers living together in the same house you people have to come together and speak about this and pray about it don't open door for the enemy because if we open door for the enemy then the enemy come into the marriage and they cause they destroy the marriage so but if two marriage couple they cannot resolve it themselves so the, they should go to the church if you go to your church listen to your pastor listen to your the leadership of the church god put them there to watch over your soul take their advice there is some that means i know somebody I mean the story a lady wanted to get married the pastor told the pastor called her and said, hey, don't marry this guy. Don't be in a hurry. I'm not telling you not to marry him, but it's too fast. Slow down. No, we already fixed date. Pastor said, it's, you're going too fast. Let me pray about this guy. Let me know more about him. You are my daughter. You are my spiritual daughter. Let me pray. Let me pray to know who this guy is. No, pastor, no, that's too late. I mean, I've waited for 10 years. Um, I have been single all my life. I finally found this guy. This is the guy. Pastor, we move too far. So what you want to do is too late. You know, the pastor said, okay, that is what you want. I can't force you against your will. But as your pastor, this is what I'm saying. The lady went ahead. The pastor went, she went, she married. The pastor went to this marriage. And the pastor said one thing said i gave them i i gave that marriage three months see because what god showed him is not good he saw that revelation about this marriage that's why he called the lady the daughter and said hey daughter slow down but she did not listen to the pastor she got married exactly three months that guy took his back and left the marriage see today that sister is not married. How many years now? Almost eight years, nine years. Sometimes it's good to listen to your leaders. It might not make sense what they are saying. You might think they want to slow you down or one way or the other. God said the leadership, they watch over your soul. They watch, their job is to watch over your soul. There are certain things that God will drop in their spirit and they share, they just let you know. It might not make sense. 
pray about it and ask God. So it is not a good idea, the summary of this, when you have issue with somebody, instead of trying to go to the police or set in the church, a brother in the church, try to settle it amicably. That is what Paul is recommending. We are the, let's say we are the church of Corinth today. He's talking to the church, he's talking to us, talking to Global Restoration Ministry. He's talking to everyone reading this today. If you have any situation, resolve it according to the way of the Lord, that it's not good to bring our matter to the, you know, to the people that are in the world, that we should settle this matter amicably in the church. Use the word of God to settle some things. I've seen where uh, believers, they have issues with business. They take themselves to court. In the same church, they take themselves to court and uh, you know, so let us practice what we are reading. Let us practice our Christianity. Not just say, hey, I'm a Christian. Let us practice it. Let us be the doer. See, if you, one person stand up and say, hey, I want to follow the way of the Lord. Some of you, I know you wronged me, but I am not going to go to court. I leave everything in the hand of God for the sake of the gospel. I'm telling you, that person, it is a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of God. When somebody said, I leave you in the hand of God, you need to, you need to call that person and make peace with that person. It is a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of God. See, when you fall into the hand of God, that is even worse than the, than the court. When God starts to deal with that situation, you, you will be the one that will be praying for that person again. So let us try to follow the, the word of God and do and practice the word of God. We should be word practitioner. We should be word practitioner, not just hearing the word and walking away from it, you know. Let us be the doers of, of the word of God. You know, verse 4, it says, so if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? Why do you take them to, to the court, worldly court? They don't have any standing in the church. They don't have anything with the Bible. So why do you take case to them? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? There is no one wise enough. There is, somebody must be in the church to settle dispute instead of, you know, going to meet people who have no standing in the church. To have no suits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. To have no suits is already a defeat for the church. It's already a defeat for the church. Like people in the same church, they are taking into that to court, you know, in the body of Christ. It must not even be the same church. Christian, taking another Christian to court. It's already a defeat. And there are people who can step into this matter and resolve the matter, but they don't want to step into it. And there are people who, among those that are fighting, one of them, maybe they can allow the devil to use him, that he will not listen to anybody. But the most spiritual one have to follow the will of God and let God handle that case instead of going to the court. That is what Paul is saying. There is one almost the more spiritual than the other one. Two wrongs cannot make a right. When you are saying I, you are wrong, another one is saying that I'm, I'm right, you know. So one person needs to say, okay, let me follow the way of the Lord. Let leave this matter for the sake of the for the sake of the body of Christ. But today, you see, even people suing their pastor, people taking, I mean, it's, today is it's, what is going on in the body of Christ? Sometimes when you hear some story, you start to question yourself. What, what kind of Bible are they reading? You know, so we should not be, we should not do things like that. When somebody offends you, take it to God in prayer, talk to this person, call some brothers in the church, go and talk to this person. Always 
look for a way to make peace and to settle this issue instead of fighting or to the point of going to the court. You know, verse 9, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, or rivalers, nor swindler will inherit the kingdom of God. See, sometimes when, you, when they preach this message in the church, the people that have the people that are practicing this thing, they say, Oh, they, why are they judging that church? They are judging, they are judging people. But that is not, this, they are not judging. This is what is in the world. It's in the Bible. So to inherit the kingdom of God, we have a purpose why we serve God and we will be rewarded and we have it. We are, look, we are believing God for eternity to inherit God's kingdom. So Paul is saying, sexually immoral, nor idolater, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thief, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor rival, nor swindler, we inherit the kingdom of God. And we are reading it out the way it is in the Bible. So this is not a judge. We are not judging anybody. You know, the, the person that is doing it, the word of God has already judged that person. It's not because the pastor is saying it or one of the person in the church is repeating this. So if we are doing things, you see the uh, consequences or the repercussion, it will hinder us to inherit the kingdom of God if we are practicing one of these. And such were some of you, verse 11, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Many of us, we all came from different backgrounds. Many of us, we were living a life that is, that is not pleasing to God. We were, but it is by grace that I am standing here today teaching. It is by grace that I'm standing here today winning soul for the Lord, praying. Because we just believe, you know, just enjoy your life. Somebody told me, say, it's enjoyment. I said, what do you mean, enjoyment? So do you mean when you are a Christian, you don't enjoy? So, some people, what it, their thoughts about enjoyment, I don't understand. They believe that when you are a child of God, you don't have enjoyment. Your life is boring, this, you, you know, but which is wrong, you know? So there is, there is joy. There is, you have more joy in Christ Jesus than living a life that is not pleasing. See, as I said last, last week, God has a purpose for everything. There is a purpose for everything. But if what we are, our thoughts, our thinking, it's a gaze, it's contrary to the purpose of God for that thing. We open the door for the enemy. We sin against our own body. We are not sinning. We sin against our body. We are coming here, you know. So, that's 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the, for the Lord. Our body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Our bodies are members of Christ. Shall I then take the member of Christ and make them member of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. 
that the sexually immoral person sins against his own body? Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. See, man is a trumpeter being. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and lives inside the body. So the God Bible is not saying now, Paul is not saying that your, your soul, your spirit, he's talking about your body. That your body is the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we have a way of thinking, of doing things that is contrary to God's way, you are sinning against your own body. You know, why some people from nowhere, they see some sickness in their body, they don't know where the sickness came from. You need to, we need to think back, we need to watch what you do with your body. Because there are some things that we get involved into we are sinning against our body. The scripture must be fulfilled. The scripture cannot be broken. So when you are doing that, we open the door for the enemy. You know, when the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. The hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. If, the, if we open the door for the enemy to attack our body, the enemy will attack our body. If you are not thinking about your body correctly, you are opening the door for the enemy. Many people, they, we say negative things about our body. Oh, I'm too heavy. I am too slim. I'm too tall. I suppose, oh, I hate my body. Look at fat. This is not good. You should not say that. You should glorify God because you are saying things against God's temple. Your body is the temple of God. So when you are condemning your own self, you are telling God, that you hate your body. And when you are saying that with your mouth, life and death is the power of the tongues. When you say that, the enemy too, they are hearing what you are saying. Okay, since he doesn't care about his body, let us destroy that body. You open the door for the enemy. So let us watch what we say with our, with our mouth regarding our body, what we do with our body. What we do with our body. He said, flee from sexual immorality. God made sex. Sex is good. Everything that God made is good. But the purpose of sex is for production, reproduction, and for, and for, for pleasure. Death, especially designed for married couples. If you are married, you have lessons. And you will even have more, more fun and more pleasure in that relationship. But if you do it contrary, the intended, the, 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 the purpose of God for, for sex, if the way you are doing it is contrary to how God designed it, abuse is inevitable. It will not take very far. It will not go very far. Problem will come. Either the person get pregnant, not prepare for it. Maybe the person is, is not ready for the pregnancy. Got pregnant, destroyed their, their, you know, their destiny with their own hands. Or the person can contact disease. For you know, they just... Have you seen people who... who lost their life, even when it was not time for them to go. They died because they opened their body for an enemy to destroy their body. It was not time for them to go, but they have to go because they put themselves in some situations. Somebody taking drugs and destroying your, destroying your body. That's why when you are a believer, you are truly a child of God. It saves you from a lot of uh, havoc. It saves, it protects you in so many areas. 
That's why the Bible says it's only a fool who says there is no God. You know, people, I don't, we don't know how this thing came to my body. I don't know. But there were things that they put their body into that make them to open their life, open their self, for the enemy to destroy the body. Any person that got involved, according to the Bible, a person commit or uh, every other sin a person commit is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. So anytime you are doing some things, sexual immoral, immorality outside the plan of God, outside the intended purpose of God, you are sinning against your body. I'm sinning against my body. If we get ourselves involved in things like that, you know, two people not married, but they are living together. You are not married, but you are living together. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the next chapter we will read after next Sunday, by God's grace, he said, to avoid sexual immorality, let a man marry. So Paul was telling them, sexual immorality is, is not good. But he gave them for you to be free from this gift of sexual immorality. Because now, concerning the matters, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relationship with a woman. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her whole husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps an agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourself to prayer. See, we will be talking about this next week, Sunday. How to, how to be free from sexual immorality. God knows. The temptation is too high. But if you want to be doing it, you want to enjoy it, get married. You know, so that is what Paul was saying here. He said, run from it. Flee. Flee from sexual immorality. You saw what happened to Joseph when Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. Everything was moving on fine. Potiphar loved Joseph. He gave, uh, he loved Joseph and put him in a big position in his household to take care of everything. Joseph was a man that has destiny to fulfill. But when the woman, Potiphar's wife, was interested in Joseph, he wanted to sleep with Joseph, commit sexual immorality. But Joseph, knew who he was in Christ. If you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Joseph knew who he was in the Lord. He knows the assignment. He knows the destiny that he's carrying that is ahead of him. Joseph, said, how can I do this to my master? First of all, he was afraid of his master. This is my boss wife. How can I sleep with my boss wife? It should not even come to my mind. How can I sin against God? Sleeping with another person's wife, his boss's wife, that is, that is a sin. Big one. He ran away. He fled from sexual immorality. And God was watching. And because of that, God, he's assuming Joseph, if Joseph had slept with Potiphar's wife, nobody knows her name to today, you know, Potiphar's wife. If Joseph had slept with that lady, his destiny would have been truncated. 
caught his destiny short. All the, because God has a plan for him to save lives in the future. So the enemy saw that. Then just Potiphar's wife opened herself for the enemy to use. Sometimes it might not be your intention. You don't have any mind to commit sexual immorality. But there are people, God, the devil will use some people to test you. And God is watching to see your reaction. And God will vindicate you. If you stand for the Lord, God will stand for you. If you stand and say, no, this, I cannot do this. I have the fear of God. And God will increase you in every area. Temptation will come. You, you will run into it. The trials will come. But what do you do? Ask yourself, what will Jesus Christ do in this situation? What will Jesus Christ do if Jesus is confronted with such thing like this? Joseph ran away, flee from sexual immorality because everything we do is outside our body. But sexual immorality is within your body. So anyone that has seen that get involved in sexual immorality, you are sinning against your own body and you are destroying God's temple. You are destroying God's temple. You know, let's let's look at the book of uh, the book of second or uh, first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Set first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. You hear that? We are God's temple. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 is saying, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. If you use your hand, if I use my hand to destroy my body, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Verse 18. Okay, yeah, to verse 17. So if you go to the book of John, let's go to the book of John, John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 19. John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? They didn't get it. Jesus was talking about his body, but he was speaking about the temple of his body. Verse 21, he was speaking about the temple of his body. He was thinking about his temple. So you are the temple of God. So if you go to the book of Romans, we read the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse, verse 1, verse 1 and 2, you know. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. He did not say... Present your spirit, present your soul. He said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Verse 2, he's speaking about the mind now. But first, he spoke about the body. So God is interested in our body. That by testing, you may design what is the will of God that is good and acceptable and perfect. Many people that got themselves involved in destroying their body, if you watch, they cut their life short with their own hand. They cut their life short very fast. So take care of your body. Let's eat what is good. Eat good, rest good, do some exercise if you can, move your body, move, you know, and exercise yourself, spend time to take care of your body, relax, 
Do what you can do, what you cannot do, leave it. Don't, don't overstress yourself. You put in stress on your body, you are stressing the temple of God. <laughs> Take care of your body, because God is interested in your body. What I told one guy, you know, I said, you are smoking. I said, you need to stand by the mirror when you are smoking, watch your face. When you stand by the mirror, you watch your face. You see, you look angry when you are trying to take the cigarette, inhale this, the smoke into your body. You stress, I mean, your face, all the, you know, it's like you are not, but take an apple and stand by the mirror and eat it and see your face, the, the, the radiation you are, you are, I mean, the, the joy of just, because the reason why if you are smoking, you watch yourself in the mirror, you see yourself, you squeeze your face, you are, it's like you are angry, but you are not angry. Because you force yourself, you are forcing that cigarette into your body. You don't need it. Your body don't need it. You are forcing it in. Anything that you are doing that is contrary to the intended purpose of God, you are destroying your body and you opening door for the enemy. Don't condemn your body the way you look. Appreciate God the way God created you. There is a reason why you are tall. There is a reason why you are a little bit heavy. Don't compare your body with another person's body. Don't every time you speak negative things, oh, my body is this, you are condemning your body. You are telling the enemy that you don't, you hate your body. So that if you are telling the enemy that you hate your body, then you are giving them permission to destroy that body. So say positive things about yourself. And, you know, if you go to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 to 29, you know, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 to 29. In the same way, husband should love their wife as their own bodies. Husband, love your wife like your bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body. Husband, it's just, you should love their wife as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So he's talking to men here. If you want to love your body very well, love your wife. Show, you know, love your wife and appreciate them. Appreciate them. Because no matter what you go through, every situation happening around you outside. When you come home, the stress, the person that takes that stress that you are bringing from outside, most of the time is the, is the wife. You listen, even when she doesn't want to listen, you force her to listen to what you want to say. You, 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 sometimes you drag, you drag them to something that they did not plan to do in their life. Put them in, but they want to support your vision. And in the midst of that, they still love you. So we have to reciprocate. We have to, we have to love our wife. Well, next week is Father's Day, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more, more about this. Love your wife. If you love your wife, you love your body. You know? So in all these things, for one year, the global restoration is one year. You know, my wife, we, she, she must have had some prophecy that talk about me or uh, becoming a church or uh, leading a church and having ministry. But she never knew that it's going to be like that. So like we, 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 that, we, we just enter it into this, you know. So she's, she's been there. It has not been easy, but she's there. We've, you know, we've gone through a lot of, a lot of stuff. Ups and down, 
like this. Many of many people that knows us, they, you know, know our stories and stuff like that. But in the midst of that, we are together, standing strong, praying together, trusting God. Because we only have one life. Trust God. We are already in, we are in. And in the midst of that stress, what they inherit, what they did not bargain for, they still love you. You put them through some stress, but they still say, I love you. They still love the body. So we have to appreciate them more. And it, it, it opens doors of opportunity when you, when you cherish your wife, when you love her more, God guides you and opens doors and opportunity for you. Don't, we should not think, the men should not think that, oh, I'm, 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 I am strong, I am amateur, I'm, I'm, it's because of me, that's why the family is running. That's a wrong idea. Wrong. Maybe it's not because of you, it's because of your wife. That is why you guys are getting along. That is why things are moving for you in the family, because your wife is an epitome of grace. Your wife is, is, is a woman of faith. You don't know. She's a, she's a wall of fire standing with you in every area. So don't, we should not look down on our wives. Let us appreciate them, love them according to the word of God, you know? So because uh, if you look at the book of Psalm, Psalm 134, Psalm 139 verse 14, this scripture is very popular. Everybody knows this scripture, you know? You know? I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. We should, we should cherish our body because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We should not use our own hand to destroy our body. We should not use our own hands to destroy our body. Anytime we are getting to a point of getting carried away, take a break. Ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this situation? Am I going too far? What am I doing now? Because every step you take, there is a boomerang. It's going to boomerang. It's going to come, and then it's going to backfire. Every wrong step that we take, first of all, there is a consequence and we are removing God's hand. We are removing God's protection from your life. And if that happens, you are not just the only person that will suffer it. You have families, you have children. You have husband, you have wife. You, will, you know, everybody will go. I mean, everybody will go down the drain and God will hold that person accountable. So that's why every action you are taking, watch, think about the consequences. Think about what is going to happen. Well, what, after all this, what is my game? What am I going to achieve from all this? am I going to achieve? So it's always good to think back. Things might not go the way you want, but we should trust God. We should not jump into things because other people are doing it. Because other people are doing this thing, it's working for them, let me go and try it. No, maybe your body is not programmed for that. Your God did not design your body for that. Your body is designed to glorify God. That is not you. Because the devil, their job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When they come into, into that body, especially with sexual immorality, their assignment is to destroy that body. I mean, there are people, I've been to hospital to pray for people. There are people that sickness, the doctor diagnosed sickness in their body. They did not have the have no idea where that sickness came from. Some of them know, but they can't tell you. And as a prophet, you don't know everything. Some of them know what happened, how they got themselves contaminated with that sickness, but they cannot tell you. They can't tell you. 
Our brother testified a couple of months ago after 46 years smoking. God took this, this, this cigarette away just like that. Here in our ministry, Global Restoration Ministry, after 46 years of smoking, a couple of years, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, you know. But what am I saying? See? Because I used to smoke. It's, I mean, you wake up early in the morning, you just drink coffee and smoke. You, you think you enjoy it, but you are destroying your body. And if you check the pack of, this, of the cigarette, it says smoking is dangerous to the body. Just for you to know. So we are not the one that force you to buy it, but it is dangerous to your body. So how can you use your own head to buy something and you are consuming it, something that the manufacturer told you that this thing is not good for your body. You are using your own hand. You use your money to buy it and you are consuming it. And you said, we are Christians and you're smoking, you know. So it's not, it's not good for your, it's not good for the body. You are destroying God's temple. Thank God for your life, brother, you know, for taking that step. That was the first thing when I, when I started, when I gave my life to Jesus in, in Koblenz, Germany, that was what I did. The first thing that God took away was cigarette. You know, so it began to align my life with, you know, where those things I used to do began to push me out of it. Those places I used to go that I think I'm having fun, it pushed me away. The Holy Spirit began to guide you and direct you. So let us try as much as possible to value our body, that our body is, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He that commits sexual immorality, you sin, we sin against our body. And when you sin against your body, you sin against the Holy Spirit. Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it's the temple of God. So God Almighty, will give us the ability to, to value our body and to take care of our body the way, the way it's supposed to be. God has a plan for you. As a minister of God, you want to reach the world. If you are sick in your body, you can't travel. Even if you have the anointing, you cannot. You can't travel. Even if you are anointed and you are, someone is sick, you can't travel. So, what does that do to the body of Christ? Why should God pour the anointing on the man that is not ready to use your, his whole hands to destroy his body? God wants to impart our life. He wants to pour his grace on us so that we can use it for his glory to draw souls into his kingdom. God is looking for a, 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 a vessel that is holy, that is standing in righteousness and you know, to, to use us. We must have done it in the past. We did not know. But now that you know, stay away from it. If you are doing something secretly that you don't know, that people don't know and you, are, you, are, you think you are hiding it, you are enjoying it, what makes you think that you are enjoying it is the, de is the demon behind it, is the, is, is the de demonic force behind it. Because anytime you do that, you gratify their, you know, them, and that is not good for you. Because the reason why they are there is to destroy, to destroy that person, is to destroy that body. And our body matters to God. Very, very important. So God has a purpose for you, no matter what you are going through. God has a purpose for your life. No matter what is happening in your life, there is a purpose because he created you for a reason. So what you are going through, don't let that uh, determine what is going to happen in your life. Because God, in a second, won't can reverse your situation. But you need to be there. You need to position yourself that where God can, you know, change some things. Where God can turn things around in your life. First of all, 
we should stay away from sin. Anything that looks like sin, stay away from sin because the eyes of God does not behold sin, does not behold iniquity. Many people, they can't talk about this because some people will get offended, you know, some people will get offended in the church and they don't want people to leave the church. But we believe in sharing the full gospel. You shall know the truth. The truth you know shall set you free. The truth we know will set us free. The truth you will know will set us free. That is why we spend time to push so much on the word of God. Because some people don't know. Nobody ever told them that what you are doing is wrong. Nobody ever told them that what they are doing is wrong. But we, we are not going to sugarcoat the word of God. We are not going to pretend to teach you the word. We're going to say it the way it is. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. Not a message that will just make people happy, make people feel comfortable. But they are living in sin. No. We are not going... We are not going to do that. Every Sunday, we can be talking about message that will make people get excited. There is a time for that. But the people, people need to be saved. People need to be delivered. We have to fulfill our purpose on earth. God has a plan and a purpose for our life. So that is what we stand for, Global Restoration Ministry, to restore people back to their initial destiny that God has set for them and to secure believers' identity in Christ Jesus. If you are walking in sin, if one is living in sin, you, you will not be bold to proclaim Christ. You will not be bold to, to, to do the things of God with boldness. You are not sure of yourself. You are in the church, but you are not sure whether you are saved or not. So when, when, when you are in the midst of people, you are like, uh, should I say I'm a Christian? Should I reveal myself to them as a believer? One mind is telling you to, to do something evil. Another mind is telling you to say that you are a child of God. So you need to balance it. So our, one of our visions is to secure people's identity in Christ Jesus, believers' identity in Christ Jesus. You need, we need to know who we are. We need to know who we are. If you don't know your identity as a, as a, as a child of God, abuse is inevitable. You, that person can be disgraced. I'm telling you, you, we need to know who we are. You cannot say one thing today, tomorrow you are saying another thing. We need to be consistent with your relationship with Christ. You need to be consistent. If people that you are moving with, they are not, they are not uh, living a life that is pleasing to God, try to help them, pray for them, but you need to start to cut your relationship from these people. Because if you cannot change them, one day they will draw you to what they are doing. They will draw you. Most of the time, some people get offended in the church and leave because they have an assignment, evil agenda. When the agenda, the assignment, they could not fulfill their evil agenda, then they run away. That's why I thank God for the prayer platform that we have in Global Restoration Ministry. Every any person with evil agenda, they will be the one to pack their bag and go. We are not going to tell you to leave, but you will just... We will, pray, we will pray and pray. That person will know, oh, I don't belong here. Go and tell them in the coven that that place, their prayer is too much. Oh, I cannot stand there. Uh, I cannot even think of, think of this idea. I, I, I know what I'm saying. I'm telling you. We thank God. If not God today, maybe this ministry, will, everything will close down. There are people, they program from the pit of hell to go and destroy churches. Because the church, they are like, relax, no prayer, no prayer, nothing, no word. They come into the church there, they bring their witchcraft spirit and they destroy the church. They, they come into the church, they contaminate everybody in the church with their, with, their, with their witchcraft because people don't know who they are. But we, we are standing on the word of God and we are praying. We are praying here, you know. So, and God will build this church. So, let us take care of our body. Let us wait on the Lord. Don't be in a hurry. Don't stress yourself. Trust God. Put, cast all your bodies upon him because he cared for you. Cast all your body upon Jehovah because he cares for you.
There is nothing too hard for God to do, but we need to put the burden in his hand. Let's trust God. God has a plan for global restoration ministry. When I say for global restoration, for the people in global restoration, because we are the people, you are the, we, you are the church, not the building. As God is moving the church forward, as God is moving the people, God is moving the church forward. Brethren, God is moving in our midst. I'm telling you the truth. That is why we have this grace to keep doing what we are doing. A church like us, we don't even have, that is why we, we are, we, you can see what we are doing. You, you know, because God is in our midst. In our midst. God bless each and every one of us. And uh, let's bow down our head. Let's bow down our head. Let us pray. Uh, where this word has touched you. Because God will send forth his word. And his word heal them and deliver them. Where the word has touched you in any area. If there is anything that you think you are using your body for. That is not meant. Is against the purpose of God for your body. I want you to pray to God. That God deliver me from that habit it is a habit it's a sinful habit as god irrespective of how long you have been a christian it doesn't matter whether you have a title or apostle or pro people will watch this online men of god women of god wherever you are there are things that you do with your body secretly that is affecting say, contrary to the plan and purpose of god for your life you are opening door for the enemy you don't want your life to be destroyed you have loved ones, you have people that care, that care about you. So we don't want to go before our time. Ask God Almighty to help you. Say, call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. The root of that habit, Father, cut it off. Where that habit stands for, wherever that habit came from, how I got myself involved in that habit. Father, I uproot that habit. I uproot that root wherever any tree that you have not planted in my life. Tree of this habit, Father, uproot it. Haraba sheke. Uproot it in the name of Jesus Christ. Uproot it in the name of Jesus. Kerebodo saka. Kerebodo seke. Kiregede. Yike kerete. Mareke tu sakati karagoze. Bradodo bradege katada kadi. Maleke tu sakadi garado. My Father, my God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the adorations. Father, uproot, O oh God, any tree of evil habit, any habit that I'm doing with my body that is not meant for my body. Father, uproot that habit, O oh God. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Father, set me free. Help me, O oh God. Deliver me because I want, to, I want to live for you. I want to make my body whole and live a righteous life. Father, help us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my God, help me to know who I am in Christ Jesus. Anytime a sin comes my way, Father, help me. Give me the boldness like Joseph to flee from sin, to flee from every sexual immoralities. In the name of Jesus, to flee from every spirit of masturbation. There are people, men, women, they, they masturbated themselves. That is against the will of God. That is not, that is not for you. Father, help us, O oh God, to stay away from every sinful, sinful act, O oh God, that does not glorify you, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Those that we watch here, O oh God, that are into drugs, we pray as they listen that they will be delivered. That yoke of taking drugs will be broken because anointing break their yoke in the name of Jesus. O oh, Rabbi Sheikh every uh, lustful thought, every lost, lustful imagination, thinking, of opposite sex, Father, we, we, we break it. We break that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against that power by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we shut that door right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my Father, my God, I from today, I appreciate my body that you have given to me. Help me, give me the grace to take care of my body, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, my body is your temple. 
help me to take care of my body. Help us to take care of our body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. My brothers and my sisters, God bless each and every one of us. And uh, we thank God for, for what he has done today and for making us to see one year global restoration ministry. We thank God for those that is going to add. God is going to add new people into our midst. New people will join global restoration. More people will partner with us. We partner with also with other churches. We pray that God will keep each and every one of us safe in the name of Jesus and God Almighty. All what we have seen this year uh, for this past couple of months in global restoration, God was with us to weather the storm in our life. Anything that we are seeing now, we are going through. The same God that stood for global restoration ministry to overcome all the challenges that came. That same God will stand for you to overcome every situation, every challenges that we are going through right now in the name of Jesus. God will use this challenge to reposition us to where he wants us to be. Every challenge is come for a purpose, for a reason in our life as a believer. Any challenges that we, that we see, we experience, there is a reason for it. God use it for his own glory. If he cannot stop it, he allows it, God has a plan for it. He has a purpose for it. It might not be palatable, might not be something that we like, but at the end of the day, we will testify. That is who God is. And he has never failed, and he will never fail in Jesus' name. We thank God. Thank God for what he's doing in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that your heart desires will be granted. Everything that you will be praying to God for, that God Almighty will grant you your heart desires, will grant us our heart desires. And God will continue to lead us. He will set us more, more on fire. Set our heart more on fire to seek the Lord, to, to just do what God called us to do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, protect every man and woman that you have sent into global restoration to support this vision. Father, to be a part of this work. Father, bless them, protect them. They will not seek, they will not, or uh, will not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. Father, anything we are believing you for, we establish us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are the God of establishment. You are the God of settlement. Father, because we put our hands together to do the will of God through global restoration ministry, Father, you will bless each and every one of us, oh God, committed to this work. You will bless them in every area, in their prayer time, in their time, their prayer, their giving. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the adorations. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Brethren, it is time to bless uh, bless God, you know, and uh, we cannot overemphasize the, the power of giving. It is our giving that open financial doors. It's not our prayers. Prayer is good, but giving, he that heareth the word of God and act on it is like a wise man that built his house on a his, on his solid rock. When the wind came, when the wind came, the storm came, could not destroy the house. So it is time to bless God. Let's give our tithe 10%. God gave us 100%. He said 10% is mine. Bring it to where you worship. It's time to bless God. I want to thank God for everyone that is giving. And uh, for those who are still struggling with, you know, giving, I pray that God will minister to them. He will, I mean, we let them know that that giving is not just about the finances. It, it, it brings uh, divine protection in every area. Your tight protects you, guide you in every areas of your life guides you and your family 
divine favor in every area. You know, somebody might say, oh, I'm, I'm not giving, but I'm getting blessed. Yes, it's, that is a trap. I was there before. I was there. Oh, I'm, but God is blessing me even if I don't give my tithe. Until I listen to a message that changed my life. No, it's a trap. When you are not doing it right and you are still getting blessed, God is setting you up. If you will change, it's a trap. Don't. What is written in the word is written in the word. And your faithfulness and your obedience can open door for you, doors that you did not expect. So faithfulness is a key. We, we strongly believe in faithfulness in global restoration ministry, in, especially in the area of giving. It's very, very important. Even kids, children are giving money. And they give them money, they pay their tithe, even if it's a few dollars, they put it in their account. So that is to tell you that, you know, it's, we need to teach our children how to give and, and stuff like that. People are giving from Germany, from Europe, even another state in America. They are not even part of our church, but they are putting money because they join the prayer. So we that are on ground, that's not, it's not negotiable, you know. So, you no, know, we can't force people to do the things of God. So. Everybody, we have to know where God has met us and where we are, how we got to where we are. Very important. So God is a good God. You know, when I, when I was in Chicago, I was in Redeemed Christian Church of God. One year I brought my, this thing, the, the CPA, the, the person that does our taxes, he looked at me and my wife, to me, you gave this money to church? I said, yes. I said, God gave me the job. You know, so you are giving today. You might, we might not see the reason why you are giving, but in five, 10 years, you might see why you were giving. <laughs> there are a lot of testimony to, to this that maybe sometimes we can share what God has been doing. You know, when you are faithful in your, in your giving, in your tithe, you will never lack. A giver never lack. A giver never lack. I, I, I've, proved, I've proved it in my life. When you are a giver, you never lack, you know. God bless each and every one of you. And uh, thank you for giving. And uh, if you have any question or about the giving account and many ways to give, please let me know. And God bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. So a couple of announcements. Uh, tomorrow, we have our leadership and discipleship class. Last week, Monday, we spoke about uh, 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 about leadership, the leadership and time or something like that. Yeah, I forgot. So tomorrow, we're going to be talking about also talk little things about leadership tomorrow. But then on Tuesday, we have our prayer starts on Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. 1.30 p.m. Our our prayer starts central time, 8.30 in Germany. So that same Tuesday, we have our midnight prayer. We have our midnight prayers. And uh, then after that, we if we need we need more people to, to, to step up to, to lead midnight prayers, we need more people so that we don't burn the people out, you know. Uh, we need people. If you are interested to take some prayer during midnight, please let me know, midnight prayer, 7 a.m. in Germany. If you are interested, that you are in Germany or you are in the US, you can you can step up and let me know if you want to be a part of that, you know. And on Wednesday evening, 6:30 p.m. Central Time, we have our hour of truth. We will continue with the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, 19, 20. We will try to do three or four chapters on Wednesday. Please. It's getting more and more interesting in the book of Genesis. Join us or invite someone to join. Even if you cannot join, tell somebody to join. Give them the information. 6.30 p.m., 1.30 a.m. in Germany. And that same night, we will be doing our midnight prayer. You know, so there is power in midnight prayers. You know, it cannot be overemphasized. So on Thursday, there is nothing going on in the platform. On Friday, we will be rounding up the book of Mark. Our sister that has been teaching is doing an excellent job in Germany, you know. God bless her. She's also here with us this morning. 
God bless you, Sister Emilia. And uh, uh, we will finish the book of Mark, chapter 16. And we will continue with the book of, we will start the book of Luke the next, next two weeks. So read the book of Mark, chapter 16, and come with questions and thoughts so that we can go from there, you know. And God bless each and every one of us. And if you have question or contribution regarding the Genesis we are reading, before we start, we will take a couple of questions. If you have questions, please prepare your question and your contribution or your contribution. We will take the question and your contribution then before we start chapter, chapter 18. And God will bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the swift fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you for your time today or uh, celebrating one year global restoration. Yesterday we turned one year. God will bless you and turn your life around your family in a supernatural way in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to the church. We are there for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.